Hi, I'm John. This is my show, An American Scheme, where I'm proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So, these video clips I'm going to show you, I use these quite frequently, and I've made lots of videos involving these actual clips. Um, but just by making a new video, I'm going to speak about it a little bit differently, and uh, I'm going to have different uh, interpretations of what I'm seeing and stuff. So, that's why I actually continue to do it. And so, what I'm going to show you here is three video clips, and this first one here, it's uh, in 1970, and then I'm going to show you the clip from the Oscars, which is 1981, and then I'm going to show you another clip, which I don't know the year, but they're speaking, they talk about, um, they reference Michael Jackson's surgeries, so you got to figure, well, he's, they're, re they're referencing a lot of his surgeries, so I'm assuming that's close to like 1990, somewhere around there. So, you know, you're looking at like these 10-year gaps of events but what you're gonna see within these 10 year gaps of events you're gonna see that there's a consistent theme from Diana Ross referring to Michael Jackson as like her son in that form in that state of mind and that's what's going on here is Diana Ross is actually Michael Jackson's mother Smokey Robinson is Michael Jackson's actual father they had to abandon their child because it was happening right at the beginning stages of the development of Motown records they needed to get rid of the child because they couldn't uh, take the risk of tarnishing Smokey Robinson's image just as Motown was developing. That's why all of this stuff occurred. And uh, what you'll see is that all of the actual evidence, when you go back and look, you'll see that the evidence actually backs it up. Now what I get happens is that when people try to counter my story, what they do is they, t they, don't, they don't deal with my story. What they do is they tell me evidence that's already out there. And what I'm showing you is what I'm going to show you here is that my evidence overrides the existing story that's out there. The people of the story that you believe and the evidence of what you think is evidence, it can't handle this uh, conversation of what I'm bringing to the table. It doesn't deal with it. So the people that are trying to, they just yell at me the story that they already know. And it's like, you, you don't even understand the basics of what's going on here is that I've overridden that story. This debunks that story that that story is not true. And so... There's a thing like just looking at Diana Ross here when she's young, just look at her and listen listen to her voice. You can see in her shoulders, her mannerisms, her actual spirit, you know, you can see Michael Jackson. And what happens is people say, oh, well, you know, Michael was trying to emulate Diana Ross and shit, right? And it's like, well, that contradicts the fact that he's having sex with her because it's like, that's you're talking about, that's super creepy. It's like, okay, so he's in love with her and he's having sex with her and now he's trying to look like her and shit. That's like, it's like, their stories of what always came out through the media was always jumbled. It was not properly, it wasn't done right and shit, right? Because they didn't have the real evidence because back then we didn't have the internet. It was hard to go back and find this stuff. So since I was the one that did the investigation luckily it was during the internet age and I've been able to go back and find all the corresponding evidence and the actual documents to prove what I'm saying and shit right so what I'm going to show you here is that in 1970 the Jacksons are living in Diana Ross's house okay and Michael Jackson states in his book Moonwalk his autobiography he says that Diana Ross would take him out alone you know the Jacksons wouldn't be there and he says he said basically every day over a period of a year and a half that's the way he stated it but so he says that she would take him out alone and now just think about the simple realities okay we're talking about Joe Jackson how stern of a father figure is he's tough right and he clearly knows that Michael's the talent in the family and shit right but for some reason he's just gonna allow Diana Ross to take out his kid and now, so that's what we're saying. If, if Michael's part of the Jackson family, why is Joseph allowing Diana to have this special relationship with Michael? And it's not just a special relationship. She's literally taking him out and exposing him to the world on, on her own. She's doing things on her own. That Joseph, when you actually understand, it's like Joseph doesn't have control over that. Diana's the one doing this. And it's like 1970, She's just met Michael Jackson. She's only, in reality, from the story of what's the known story, she's not like, she hasn't seen him like for, for years and years. She hasn't known him. This is a, a relationship that's just developed over the past year, you know? And But for some reason, listen to the way she speaks about this kid that she's really basically just known for a year. But in reality, he's living at her house this, this time, and she's got the power to take him out and do things that she wants with him. You know, it's weird stuff. So here, listen to this right here. 
you're awfully big. Hi, David Gottesheim. I love him. We have one of them in the audience here with us. Where? We have Michael Jackson somewhere out there. Is he out there? Where is he? There he is. That's my child. Hey. <laughs> That's Michael. Okay, so she says, there he is, that's my child, okay? And then when you see him here, see there's Michael, and you'll see him, he's sitting there alone, sitting next to a bunch of old white ladies. It's hilarious and shit. Here, I'll play this, you'll see him sit down. You'll see he's sitting in the crowd by himself, okay? So now he's a 10-year-old kid. This is a weird experience for a kid to be sitting in the audience by himself. His family's not there. And then Diana is referring to him as, there's my child, and there's a lot more to it. But watch when he sits down. Hell, he's just by these old white ladies. It's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> you know, Don't you know anybody? Get a better seat. <laughs> <laughs> he's being incognito. <laughs> See, he's being incognito, too. There's these little things. Like, that's just a subtle little thing, right? But he's being incognito. And it's like, well, what's that mean? He's, he's acting like he's, like, hiding from who he really is and shit, or he's, like, in disguise. You know, what does that actually mean? Like, this is a thing that's, like, these words that come into her head. And it's like... <clears throat> the words that are coming into her head and the way she talks here, you really understand it when you understand that she's actually his mother, that she's basically just gotten back into his life. She abandoned him as a child, but now she's gotten back into his life. He's living in her house, and <clears throat> she's taking him out because she's trying to regain the lost years. That's why this is occurring. This is not occurring because she's taken Michael Jackson away from the Jackson family and Joseph is allowing that, there would be some other kid there, you know, if Joseph, if she says, oh, I want Michael to see the show and Joseph's just going to say, okay, go ahead, just take Michael. Joseph's not going to insist, well, take another one of the kids with you too. At least take somebody else, you know, so Michael's not alone, but no, he's alone. You know, she's calling him my child. He's incognito. And now listen, there's much more to it. You know, I, uh, they made me work hard because I want to be uh, something, I mean, I am. Michael has always been like a son or a brother or something to me. Like, okay, so they make me work hard and she's trying to say it without saying it, right? And she says, Michael has always been like a son, okay? What do you mean? She's just met this kid. She's only known him like a, like a year. Why would the words come out of her mouth that Michael's always been like a son to me? This is some more of a bigger relationship of what the words that are coming out of her mouth. The way that those words are formed, you understand it when you understand that she is his mother. You know? But the way that she would say that and shit, right? It's like that. It, it, it's like he's always been like a son to me. And with her acting this way, having that relationship, that would have been a thing instantly where Joseph then would have stood in and be like, get the fuck away from my kid. Who are you, you crazy bitch? You trying to take ownership of my kid? But that's not what happened. Because Joseph didn't have, have control over this situation. And they've been, they've admired me sort of like, so I try very hard to keep up such a an image for them. And when I do a show like this, they usually sneak Michael in. I really didn't know he was going to be here. I heard about it, and I was hoping that he was here because it makes me a little bit stronger because I'm doing it basically for him. That right there. It makes me a little bit stronger because basically I'm doing it for him. Him. Specifically him. She specifies, she specifies that I'm doing it basically for him. What the, f like that line alone is like, what the fuck? She just said, that's my child. She said, he's always, always, we're talking about a longer period of time. He's always been like a son to me. And she says, because it makes me work harder because basically I'm doing everything for him. What the fuck is she talking about? But when you actually understand the reality that she abandoned Michael Jackson when she was only 14 years old and she did it to help Barry Gordy create Motown Records with Smokey Robinson. When you actually understand the, the background context of the actual what's going on here, now can you actually understand the words of what's coming out of her mouth at this time? Why would she say, basically, I do everything for him? For And she didn't say for for all the Jacksons or for all children it's specifically 
there's my child. He's always been like a son to me, and I do everything for him. It's fucking insane. And, but nobody ever fucking looked back and found this shit. Like I said, nobody did the investigation. People didn't have access to the internet, so they didn't have this information available. But once I started the investigation, see, and this is the thing. I didn't find this and then create a story. That's not what happened. I had, I was watching the movie Lady Sings the Blues. And like, just like in this, like here, when Diana's sitting there. See, I'm, a, I'm 48 years old, so I knew the story about Michael looking like Diana, and I knew that, you know, I was a Michael Jackson fan. I knew that, that there was a relationship between them. I had a great deal of knowledge. After Michael Jackson died, six months after, there, there was a two-piece of information that I acquired. I acquired that Diana Ross did not go to Michael Jackson's memorial at the Staples Center, and then I heard the letter that she had written that was read by Smokey Robinson and then Diana Ross was in Michael Jackson's will as a um, guardian to Michael's children it was Catherine was the guardian then after Catherine was Diana Ross so that instantly I, I had that information so I knew that wow Diana was really important you know but then she didn't go to the memorial which I was like well, how could that be possible how could Michael place her in a position to be a guardian of his children and then here's Michael's children having to sit at a young age at the memorial and have to deal with all of the media and what uh, Michael Jackson's death brought right the kids they're just kids they're having to deal with that Diana's placed as a guardian over the kids but Diana does not have the strength to go and sit at the memorial and it was fucking weird as fuck. Shit was weird. So I had that in my mind, but I still didn't know. I didn't know what it meant. I just had it in my mind. Six months after Michael J Jackson dies, I watched the movie Lady Sings the Blues. And when I was watching the movie, it's around this same time. Diana's probably filming the movie at this time. So she looks like this. And as she's singing and she's up there on the stage, I actually started seeing like her like morphing into Michael Jackson. So when I was seeing her, I literally saw Michael Jackson, what it looked like, what I would refer to as like Michael Jackson in drag. And as I saw it, that's how I came up in my head. I had the thought. And this is how everything started. I actually had the thought, wait, I wonder if it's possible if Diana Ross could be Michael Jackson's mother. That's how this whole, I start, and then I started an investigation. I've been doing this now for 10 years. I've been on this investigation, and through my process of doing the investigation, I found evidence. I didn't just like, like I said, I first had the thought, could she be his mother? I didn't know about any of these videos and stuff that I'm going to show you here. I didn't know any of this stuff existed. I had never seen any of this stuff. But when I started doing the investigation and actually looking into it, this is what you find. And when you find it, you can clearly understand and explain it now when you actually understand that she is Michael Jackson's mother, that that's what's going on, because when you actually look at this, it doesn't make any sense. There's no logic to what the fuck is she talking about. It's not logical. And see, the, the fans, they're not dealing with the new evidence that I'm putting to the table. They just keep telling me the old story. They, they instantly, they don't tell me that, oh, I can prove your story wrong because what you're saying is wrong. They don't do that. They just say, you're wrong. Okay, it's a big fucking difference. They don't say what you're saying and your conclusions. They don't say that that's wrong. They just tell me you're wrong because I've known the truth for years and years. And it's like, you stupid moron, I'm bringing new evidence to the table. So you can't argue my new evidence with thoughts that you've had over fucking your whole lifetime. It's pathetic. These people are stupid as fuck. So, like I said, you have that first video there when Michael is just coming to Motown in like 1970. Okay, so now from the time from 1970 to this is 1981 at the Oscars, they've done the movie The Wiz already at this time. And Michael Jackson is supposedly from the folklore of the Diana Ross and Michael Jackson story. Michael Jackson and Diana Ross have had some kind of a love relationship, a sexual relationship, right? But when they go to the Oscars, how does she refer Michael, to him? Michael, Diana, one quick minute. Tonight is a night for film. What are your plans in film coming up? We're going to do something soon. He's going to play my son. So instantly, he says, what's your plans in film? Oh, we're going to do something soon, and he's going to play my son. Okay? So she's telling you that if they're going to do a movie that... In the context of the movie, it, she's going to be the mother and he's going to be the son, 
okay? She's telling you that she's looking at him more like a son, actually like a son, like she told you in that first interview. Oh, he's like a child. He's like my son. He's always been like a son. So what that does is it, it, it totally destroys the idea that she's having sexual relations with Michael because if she's having sexual relations with Michael, who's a big star at this time, she's not looking at him like a son. That's dirty and creepy as fuck. It's disgusting. If she would not, she would be saying if it was like if they were having a relationship and she wanted to throw out a code related to that, she would say, oh, yeah, we're going to do a movie and he's going to play my young lover. That's how that would have come out. But that's not what she said. She didn't refer to him as like a young lover or she didn't say he's I'm going to be his manager, a star in the movie, something that would be relating to something. No, it's something completely out of the ordinary. He's going to play my son. And here again, here's Michael and Diana together. They've been together always over and over. There's so much stuff going on, but it can't be sexual because she refers to him instantly as a son. It's, that'd be creepy as fuck for Diana Ross. And Diana Ross is in relationships. She's got real relationships are going on. But this is why Michael Jackson is damaged because he's got a secret to cover up. And see, Michael Jackson realized at 10 years old when Diana Ross told him the truth that he realized that he was abandoned as a child. And now he's having to deal with the realities of being in limbo between two families. He's an orphan child. He's, he was lived as a Jackson, but he's not really a Jackson. Diana Ross now has reclaimed him, but Diana Ross won't let Michael actually like live with her in that kind of fashion where he, she's told the world that this is my child and shit, right? So Michael is like left in limbo. And then he sees his older brothers all having sexual relationships. See, see this happened when Michael was 10, he found out the truth, right? So all of his older brothers, they're stars and they're having sex with women and shit, right? Michael is seeing women coming on to him and hitting on him, but Michael does not want to have a child. He doesn't want to get a child. He, you know, he's like, well, if you have children, you've got to be married and shit. So, he, you know, he gained more. He got morals. He's like, I don't want to have a child out of wedlock because look at what happened to me and shit. That's why all this stuff with Michael, there's so much with the Peter Pan and the Neverland Ranch, which is Peter Pan dealing with orphan children. All of the signs are there. When you actually look at the realities of everything that you actually did see, you'll see that my story actually explains how it happened. All of the proper development all falls in line with this story. This is Michael Jackson's reality. But people are having a hard time understanding, and that's why this story is so big, is that Michael Jackson lived and died under the umbrella of the lie, and nobody fucking knew the truth. So now, when the truth comes out, it's going to be an awakening for the people to let them see, look at, look at what happened to Michael Jackson. You don't think that lies can go on right in front of your face? Look at Michael Jackson. This will always and forever, for eternity, this will be the story that re people refer back to and say, don't trust the media. And it's like, don't believe what people tell you. Look at Michael Jackson. This will be the fucking story that everybody relates back to. So now we go to, now this would be like, uh, like I said, I, I'm not sure what year this is, um, but they talk about Michael Jackson's surgery, so we got to be assuming it's probably like another 10 years after that, right? So let's listen to what Diana Ross says about Michael Jackson. He could be part of my family. Yeah. Okay. He could be part of my family. Okay. And then what, listen what she says. She even goes even more above and beyond that. Listen what she says. Uh, we have a lot of the same bone structure and yeah. a lot of uh, skin well, color. Well, Michael the does same. now because he's had it all done. <laughs> I you take that as you a compliment. Cannot. I refuse you to insult Michael. He's a friend of mine. Yeah. I love him, yeah. and I don't like people making fun no, of no, him. No, no, but see how serious she fucking got. She got real serious, okay? But so, she told you Michael could be part of my family. Now, what the fuck is, why is she still harping on this shit that Michael's like part of her family? But she doesn't only say he could be part of my family. She brings forward physical attributes. She says, we have the same bone structure. Our skin color is the same. We have the same bone structure. Same, did you hear what the fucking bitch just said? She said, Michael Jackson could be part of my family because we've got the same bone structure. She was on this for years. She's been saying this fucking same thing. And what she did is that she wants, she wanted the truth to come out. 
and she documented but it's one of these things that she didn't understand like the internet you know back at this time we still don't know about the internet's coming out and all this stuff is going to be put there and be readily available for people but she does know that it's being videotaped and it's cataloged and, and stored away and that's what she was doing here is that she wanted to make sure that she left behind like the breadcrumbs for somebody to go pick them up and put the fucking thing back together and find the true story that she is fucking Michael Jackson's mother. She had to leave the evidence behind because like I said, once I started doing the investigation, what I found is that she was telling people that Michael is her child. And it's not just a fucking one thing. She told you right in the beginning, that's my child. He's always like a son. I do everything for him. And Michael's actually living in her house at that time. Then after they've done the movie The Wiz and, and then they're claimed to have a sexual relationship at the Oscars, how does she refer to him? He's going to play my son. Then like another 10 years after that, what does she say about Michael? He could be part of my family. We've got the same bone structure, physical fucking attributes. This is evidence. This is a fucking chain of events that is occurring over a long period of time with the common theme that she is actually fucking Michael Jackson's mother and she was fucking documenting it and putting it out there to make sure that sometime in history that this was going to come out. Now... The one of the things that I fucking, when I, if people ever hear me yelling at like the YouTubers, because I've dealt with the Michael Jackson fans for years, and they, they will not deal with this. They can't deal with this. And that's why you all know you're fake fans. You're not a real Michael Jackson fan. Because if you were a real Michael Jackson fan, you would at least have to acknowledge that I'm doing a real investigation. But they all look at me like I'm crazy, like I'm the fucking crazy psycho and shit. How am I a crazy psycho for doing this? This is asking real questions, I'm using real evidence, I'm showing a chain of, of, con of a consistent events occurring over a long period of time with a common fucking theme. And, the, and it's above, it's not just a simple little thing where like the people that say that Diana Ross and Michael are having sex, they use stupid little things like, oh yeah, I love him. Well, what does that mean? This is Diana saying, that's my child, that's my son, I do everything for him. Yeah, we're going to do a movie, he's going to play my son. Yeah, fucking Michael could be part of my family, we have the same bone structure. This is a much more in-depth, detailed understanding of what's going on. And this cannot be mistaken, as you can't just brush it off that she's just playing around, because it's too much. What she's doing is too much, and you got to understand the reality. Who ends up in Michael Jackson's will as a guardian to his children? Diana Ross does, not any of the fucking other Jacksons. It's Catherine Jackson, but she's old, so there's a good chance that she would have passed away before she was able to fulfill her obligation. Then who did Michael put in that position as a motherly position over his children? Diana Ross. There's a chain of events, it constantly is occurring, and what happens when you look at Michael Jackson's life, you'll see that Michael Jackson's actual life follows the chain of events of what I'm showing you here. That Michael Jackson did not live the life of a fucking rock star who's doing drugs and banging fucking hot bitches. He didn't live that life. When you look at his personality and you'll see the reality of the, his personality follows the proper chain of events of what I'm showing you. And like I said, I I'm actually explaining the songs. Billy Jean is the one biggest one that Billy Jean, when they're talking about, uh, she says, I am the one, but the kid is not my son. It's Diana Ross informing Michael Jackson that he was the love child of her and Smokey Robinson, which spawned all kinds of events that made all kinds of things happen, which that's why he's designated as the one. But she says, the kid is not my son because she tells Michael, you have to remain in the Jackson family. So she tells Michael, um, you're the one, you know, but then she says, the kid's not my son. So she, she brings, embraces him and then she rejects him. That's what the fucking song Billie Jean's actually about. Diana Ross is Billie Jean. The kid in the sun song is Michael. Michael's the fucking kid in the song. In the song, it's not Michael saying the kid is not my son. It was Billie Jean. She says that whole line. People just interpreted it the way they wanted to interpret it. But you people have never dealt with reality. And when you start dealing with reality, what you find is that everything starts to come clear. There's nothing that doesn't fall in line with the proper patterns of the evidence for which I'm showing you. And I yell at all the fans and I yell at uh, 
um, the black conscious community people that should have some interest in fucking talking about Motown and Michael Jackson, they won't deal with my story because they're stupid, pathetic, fucking losers. So I yell at them all. And the one reason I yell at them all is because Diana Ross is alive and Smokey Robinson is alive. And it's like one of these things, these people are all waiting. I yell at the Jesus people too. They're waiting for Jesus to come back. And it's like, fuck that, waiting for Jesus shit to come back. This story happened in our fucking lifetime. Diana Ross is alive and Smokey Robinson is a fucking life. Help break this story and we can actually hear the fucking truth right from the fucking horse's mouth. You don't need to get my fucking interpretations. They're fucking still alive. Get this fucking story out there and you're going to be able to hear fucking story that fucking is going to blow people's fucking minds and it's reality. It's real. It's right fucking here. I'm not fucking hiding or running from anybody. I dare anybody to fucking come up and challenge me because I'm going to beat your punk fucking ass, you ignorant fucking losers.